Holy crap! I think it worked! So far! How's it going guys? It uh, It's pretty gloomy out, it's pretty windy. Been like this for a couple days, supposed to be like this through the weekend. I've got a bunch of work coming up, so I'm a little scared, but it's time to rip into the panel. I'm gonna be upgrading my avionics in the good old girl. Uh, right now I just got the old steam gauges, if you want, if you must, uh, iPad, and then, uh, you know, a little digital gauge here and there, but we're gonna be putting a whole new base on this uh, beast. I'll put an example of what we're going for right here. So it should be pretty cool and uh, definitely add a lot of features. I'll get my true airspeed, wind, map, uh, traffic, weather. Uh, it's going to be really nice and then I also won't be so afraid to fly at night because I'll have a true attitude gauge and um, all that to, to be safer, safer pilot. Um, uh, let me preface this by I am not an AMP or an IA and uh, I this will be the first plane I'll have worked on. I do have Derek, my instructor who you've seen in previous videos. Uh, he is an AMP so he'll be kind of guiding me along but I've, uh, I I'd say I'm pretty knowledgeable in uh, this kind of stuff. I've worked on cars, motorcycles, uh, it's pretty much just following diagrams and hooking up wires. Um, there's a little bit more to it than that but uh, that's the basics. So I'm going to tear into the panel and figure out where some of these wires are going because I know that the, the previous wiring is a little, a little janky. <laughs> I've noticed some kind of weird little things going on. So I'm hoping the plane won't be down for too long because uh, this could really be a bummer if the weather like shapes up, which it's supposed to, and I can't fly. And I don't want to be leading too much into the summer here because then uh, my flying hours will really be limited to just early morning. So uh, let's dive into it. First thing first, I'm going to start removing the panel, labeling all the wires that uh, are hooked up so I don't get lost on where they go and just being pretty detailed on, uh, on where things are, uh, what they connect to. And also just this video is kind of a documentation for me as well so I can go back and uh, know where things went. All right, and so this this is what the panel looks like right now. Going to be a whole different setup. We're going to have screen up there, iPad down here, all our important gauges like the turn cone air, airspeed is going to stay over there so uh, anyone flying from the back can see it. All the engine gauges like the temps and stuff are going to be all included in the Grand Rapids display and then the radio will be on the left. Uh, on this side it'll be like all the important switches that you'll only use on uh, most likely startup and, and shutdown, like the ignition, um, the, the, what else you got, the master. Uh, I've got also a battery master, so I have a battery backup. So if for some reason my battery fails, alternator fails, um, or voltage regulator, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's not an alternator. But uh, if that fails, then I have at least a little bit of time to power my radio, uh, and the, the necessities so I can communicate and, uh, and get where I need to go. I'm also going to be installing the vertical dash. This is, I don't know if you can tell, it's got a slight angle to it, um, which is annoying when the sun comes in off these gauges. You can't see the gauges. So definitely want to do safety first. We're going to have to unplug the battery. <laughs> Any tips and tricks? Leave them in the comments, please. I would much appreciate it. Um, Grand Rapids technology, that's going to be the suite, and uh, here we go. You can call me Right, here we are back at the instrument panel still taking it apart um, the wiring that was done I'm not gonna say it was garbage but it's just a rat's nest underneath there it's just a rat's nest underneath there and uh, these gauges are super old 
Uh, the screws are kind of like just seized on there. It's kind of a pain in the butt, actually. It's it's raining out. It's beautiful out, actually. I love this. I, if I had this heated or had like my heated jacket on, I'd probably open the hanger door and, and uh, get some fresh air. But as Mark Patey says, back to work. Finally got the panel out. It, it's it was kind of a mess under there, a little unorganized, but pretty easy to follow, to be honest. Um, so I think it'll be a pretty straightforward install. I'm just cleaning up the wires uh, that I have left, labeling them, like uh, the strobes, landing lights, stuff like that, so I know where those wires are going to and come from. Uh, day two, I got all the wiring uh, removed, all the old instrumentation removed, uh, organized all the wiring, it was kind of a mess, and uh, labeled everything. So I've got a pretty good starting point to where I need to go to. Now we're on to the dash. So what I'm going to be doing is, I've got a, I've already kind of test fitted it. I got to cut some pieces to make it fit, but uh, I want to get the dash, which is you know the top part, and then the panel mounts to that. Get that pre-fitted before I really get too much farther into wiring. So as you can see, I've removed uh, just about everything. And what I've been doing is I've rerouted. So I've got my batteries. Let me see. Let's brighten it up in here. You can see my down there. That's uh, where all the cables from the back of the plane come from. The battery cable, beacon, trim, antenna cables. And I rerouted them to go underneath here instead of on the side where it can be kicked by feet. And then all the way up and into the panel. It's a lot cleaner installation instead of, uh, it used to be like right along here and where people's feet would be in the back the passenger and it, and it just also looked terrible um, so this will clean it up make everything go down the center except for the pedo tubes i'll probably have come down the, the side but that was fine and i've actually got some fun yellow pedo tube to match the rest of the thing so that's kind of cool all right day two Look who's decided to show up. She's helping me because I needed help. She came up with a good idea. Tell me idea. Um, cut it up <laughs> into three sections. This is the dash that's got to go in. You're supposed to do this when you are building the plane and the wind's was off. And to take the windshield off, probably not that big of a deal, but uh, it's a process, and I'm worried that the windshield might get damaged, and I've got a invisible windshield. So she came with this idea of cutting these in three pieces that I can put in instead of trying to like figure out how to get this in. But right now, what we're doing is uh, trying to figure out these holes and the cleat goes, and it's still a pain in the butt. But we're, we're getting there slowly. Today is not a fast moving moving day. Uh, why we want to cut it in three halves because I got to rivet this and I won't be able to deal with the windshield on so It's kind of a pain in the butt right now. I'm not enjoying it. So that's all. Back to you, Bob What the hell is Bob? I don't know <laughs> All right, it's in Oh gosh, so her plan worked and she even stuck around She's still here. She got a Starbucks and Del Taco, and she helped me get tools, because I'll tell you, getting in and out of this thing with the bigger wheels, uh, my back is sore. But uh, a lot of cussing, <laughs> a lot of cutting. Uh, we did it. Currently black ooze dripping into some wound. Oh yeah, I, I've got hand. cuts working with sharp edges of aluminum. But uh, I got the panel the dash in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, day two down. Spent 
five to six hours maybe. And without the help of her, I'd probably still be here working on that dash. It was like seven hours. No, I got here at like almost 11. And it's only like, what, five or something? But uh, dash is, for the most part, finished or, or fitted. I gotta tweak it and then paint it and then permanently put it in there and then we'll start the actual instrument panel. So basically what we have is I've cut the dash into three pieces. Don't mind the extra holes. I'm gonna be covering the top of it with uh, like some felt or carpet. Uh, but so I've got three different pieces and I'll flip the camera. Ah, I'll flip the camera around here. So that's what we got, three little pieces. Um, which makes it so much easier to get it in and out of the the plane without damaging the windshield. And uh, it's worked out pretty well. I riveted these tabs on here, which once I get everything finally painted and, and nice, I'm gonna, it helps keep these together and flush. And uh, overall, it's turned out okay. This part's been a, a pain in the butt. These are where the, the bars in the front come through. And uh, every time I go there, it seems like they get closer somehow. But uh, and that's the little bracket down there that uh, holds it all. It's all riveted. I think it's day five. I didn't record much of the other days because there wasn't much progress. There was a lot of tinkering, putting things in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. A lot of that. And uh, a lot of zip ties. <laughs> I, w I want to wait, but it helps me organize like the wires to zip tie them together. Maybe I should use, I don't know. Anyways, uh, I'll show you what I got here uh, done now. So you can see I made a little tray for my backup battery. The 3 amp battery backup by TCW should be enough supposedly to power my EFIS, um, the engine instrument, uh, engine uh, information system, and uh, my comms if I need to for probably like 45 minutes to an hour. But And then underneath is gonna be where my fuses are. And that took forever. Mostly it was the dash that was taking forever to to construct because I really did not want to take the windshield out. Look who showed up. Yeah, I know you needed help. So I still think we should take the back screws off and bring it up like this in order to fit the rivet gun in there. We're back to the chopping block. We're going to cut the dash frame, or the panel frame, that the panel mounts to into three pieces now. <laughs> what, did, what did you say about uh, doing it the right way? That you're not. Hey, <laughs> I didn't want to have to remove the windshield. Oftentimes, doing it the right way is the hardest way, is what I said. And. I don't know, this is pretty hard too. <laughs> this is not the right way. I think I made progress today. Finally got the dash mounted. And it looks pretty good. Um, there's a few things that are that I'm a little perfectionist about, but uh, nothing that anybody else will probably see. Um, and I'm gonna probably cover the top with some, some carpet or felt type stuff to really finish it off. So anyways, I've uh, swept and cleaned up for the night and we'll be back tomorrow and we're back another day and another dollar spent so I'm going to show you guys what uh, what I did yesterday check it out so I finally got the dash installed that hole's going to be an exhaust fan port um, so what we ended up doing was that frame in the back that mounts the boot cowl. We cut that into three pieces. We cut the dash part into three pieces. And then there's this frame right here that's for the panel uh, mount. And we cut that into three pieces. All this to prevent taking the windshield off, which hindsight 2020 would have just been easier. So that's where we're at right now. Um, I've been talking with GRT, which is uh, the company that I bought the avionics from and it's looking like my engine information system might be useless. They're saying that uh, the sensors I have on my engine might be too old for the uh, engine information system to read or something. 
the software version, which I'm kind of a little perturbed because, you know, when you buy it, it just says uh, EIS for Rotex 912 ULS. It doesn't say you need to have specific sensors and all this stuff, so a little bit uh, irritated because I'm, I'm, I bought it from Aircraft Spruce and, and passive return period, um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I'm still researching it. The sensors can be changed, but I, I'm reading that they're quite expensive. Um, so we'll see. I, I definitely need oil temperature sensors. Uh, it would be nice to have CHT sensors. Um, the rest of it I think is okay. Like obviously like tachometer, um, what else is there? Exhaust gas temperatures. Um, oil pressure might be a thing too. Uh, I might have the wrong oil pressure sensor. So. I guess it's all part of owning a plane. If it's not one dollar, it's two dollars. All right, if you can't tell, it is, I'm getting dripped on. It's raining and it's raining pretty good. So, you know what that means? Hangar time. So, I'm gonna get back into it. I have so far, so far I have done all the light switches done. I've even cut some of the panel. I'll uh, kind of show you some of these details, but it's making progress. It's just kind of slow because I'm trying not to just buy a bunch of stuff and realize that I don't need half the stuff, so I'm trying to buy it piece by piece, which slows me down. But the dash is fully done. Uh, I even got a hole cut in the, the temporary panel for the, the EFIS. I uh, got a lot of the wiring kind of done. So I'm hoping a week one more week at my pace and then I'll have it done so brother say back to work <laughs> back to work